everyone. I am a graphic designer and a game enthusiast. So what am I going to present today is actually something related to gaming. But we are not going to talk about augmented reality. We are going to talk about alternate reality. Right? And how we can actually use gaming and hack into our own intrinsic motivation. Now, to me personally, I think game is more than just an isolated escapist simulation that most people would actually brand game into that aspect. Um, but personally, I think game can create a vital and complex engagement with the real world and the real life. Now, games are clues to the future and the serious cultivation is perhaps our only salvation. I was inspired when I was reading through a recorded text by this Greek historian. His name is actually Herodotus. Now, according to Herodotus, games, particular dice games, are invented by the kingdom of Lydia when they are actually suffering from famine. Now, according to the text, Herodotus mentioned that these people they survived the famine for the past 18 years by playing game. Why? I was very curious and I was um, inspired in a sense because when I heard this, I tried to find out more research in terms of how they actually accomplished this. And then recently I found the text and it was mentioned that when they play game, it creates a certain distraction from their hunger. So they would actually eat on every other day. And then the alternate days when they're actually fasting, they actually play game to distract themselves. And they actually pass 18 years of famine because of this activity. Now, eventually, they would run down of resources. So the king of Lydia decided to tell the people that, all right, I think we need to play our last game. Now, this last game will actually decide how they would emerge into the future. Now, one part of the people, they would stay back and they will use whatever resources they have. The other half, they would actually venture off Lydia and go to colonize other locations. Now, um, archaeologists today actually found that there is a relation from modern day Italians they actually found a genetic code which can reach back to the kingdom of India. So there is a possibility that these people from the kingdom of India actually survived the famine. So I was very awestruck, I was very inspired. So I think that game can actually create a social impact and perhaps it's quite important for us at this time. Now, when we talk about games, we usually relate games with graphics, narrative, you know, compelling um, interactivity. We talk about the technology behind games, we talk about the virtual environment, and we talk about the competition, esports, and we talk about the reward. But most importantly, I think people are interested in the idea of how you can actually win a game. Now, there is four core elements when it comes to uh, game design, when it comes to the definition of game. We look at the goal, we look at the feedback system, we look at the rule of the game, we look at the voluntary participation. Because I can't force you to play the game. All right. Now, the goal actually gives the player a sense of purpose. It gives the player a specific outcome that they will actually work on to achieve. All right. Now. The rules actually limits the player in terms of how they can overcome their obstacles, but it also unleashes their creativity and strategic thinking. Now, there's approximately 2.5 billion gamers worldwide. Now, the age range is not 18 years old in terms of average reaching. Um, it's not 18 years old, it's not 20 years old, it's not 24, but actually it's 34, which is older than me. Okay. <laughs> Now, the majority of the game segment, according to the latest global gaming market 2019, um, is actually 
console. Console game actually took over a large portion. Now the second, which is coming up, is actually mobile gaming. Now, when we play game, it felt very um, happy in terms of why we play game when we can create that sense of um, creativity or perhaps a satisfaction while playing game. Now, when we are playing game, we crave um, satisfying work. All right? When we do satisfying work, no matter how hard the work it is, no matter how difficult it is, one, once we accomplish, the brain actually releases a potent cocktail of endorphins and dopamine. With this, it actually triggers your internal happiness system. All right, I accomplished a very hard work. Now, second one. When we look at games, we actually crave for the experience or we are hoping that we can achieve success while playing games because we want to solve the problem in front of us. Third one, when we are playing games, we actually crave for the social connection because we're actually building bonds. We're creating relationship with people, all right? Um, it encourages collaborative learning or collab collaborative problem solving. Now, gamers are super empowered and hopeful individual. Why? Because we crave for something called meaning. We want to be a part of something that is larger than ourselves. We want to feel that we're actually contributing a large significant amount of our time in solving important social problems or solving the game problem. Now, the problem is most gamers, they only believe that they can solve the virtual problem. All right, when it comes to real world problem, they try to avoid. So I want to harvest the amount of human resource that we can tap into because there's technically 2.5 around the world playing games. So I'm interested in tapping that collective intelligence. Now, technology is not the enemy. All right? We know that internet, electricity, steam power, we know that printing, all of this already contribute a large amount of our civilization. Except for this guy. All right? Now, we're in a human civilization where we are so pregnant with possibilities, all right? Which brings me into this. What is exactly ARG? Now, when we talk about ARG, we mostly associate ARG as an augmented reality game. But what I'm presenting to you today is alternate reality gaming. So how can we create that alternate reality? Um, we are actually using this concept to infiltrate real life. We will showcase enough real world content making you believe that this is actually happening. And we need to solve this problem as soon as possible. And we, incorporate it. we are incorporating multimedia platform. Okay, we are playing with visual, audio, we are playing with um, GPS system, project mapping. So we are using transmedia storytelling. All right, we're telling a story through different platforms. Now, this is actually a game that I designed when I was studying in Manchester. Um, it's a personal project, me and my friend Richard. We designed this game during 2015. Now, during 2015, the, the refugee crisis is actually happening and a lot of refugee immigrating to Europe. So, it creates a we felt that you know, there's a need to identify this problem. How can we eradicate poverty? So we actually created this poster. As you can see, it's very provocative. It's very bold. Right? We're actually creating a character called Ania, and we, are, we, want, we want to tell the story. Okay, but it's fictional. But the poster seems like it's real. So when we place this poster around Manchester, people actually they're quite curious, okay, who is this? And why there's like extermination? There is like, who is Annie? Have you seen Annie? Is it a missing girl? So are we going to try and help and 
help to find this girl. So, below the poster, there is a website. We named the game Popularis. Now, once you get access into the website, you sign up to the newsletter, you will receive something called something we call a postcard from the future. All right, Richard, he is a writer, so he wrote most of the story for me. He wrote most of the clues of the game. So I did the design, I did the visuals, I did the illustration. So players will actually receive this postcard. All right, on top of the postcard, you can see there's a GPS code. All right, and then there's a poem below. So people actually they have to Google the place. They have to Google map the place and try to relate the poem and the location itself. So this is actually the Manchester Central Library. All right, once they went to that library, there's a signboard. So they have to scan. They have to use their phone to scan so that they can get access into the story or into the game world. So we're actually combining the real world and alternate reality together. So this is a visual. Okay. Now, sorry for the portrait landscape contradiction. All right, this is a blog space or an information website. So when people get access into the game, they will first encounter this website. So this website is actually a think tank. All right, people will post their solution. All right, if let's say you want to eradicate poverty, we need to experiment with different aspects of poverty. We start with education, all right? So they will give solution for education. How can we overcome education in poverty? How can we build up the infrastructure? So we're actually collecting data from the players. They are contributing into the game. Once a mission is unlocked, they can upload their solution. As you can see, some of the visual, I did it with like videos, um, the tabs are interchangeable and then they'll get access into the story. All right. Um, after that, they can download the app. All right. This app, in between the tabs, the clues, you have the storyline, you have the poverty, eradication, technique. And then we want to do this to bind up the whole world together. Different player from different locations so we can definitely create a think tank. We want to harness the power of gaming and how people can actually contribute and face social impact issues. All right, this is another visual. Now, the main aim of my talk or perhaps my personal project is to tell that games are not just outlet for entertainment. We can actually use games as a creative expression. We can use game as a tool to examine social issues, right? Because we are playing in a very safe environment. We are playing in a very safe setting. So if let's say this solution doesn't work out, we can try another solution. So it keep pushing us to try and try and try. Now, I hope I can inspire the future generation in trying out different tools to experiment. Um, that's all for my talk. Thank you very much.